Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge CAD Modeling Tutorial Series. Our goal in this series is to provide guidance in using Autodesk Inventor for First Tech Challenge. In today's video, we are going to be looking at the 2D sketch constraints. Now, sort of similar to the modify tools, some of the constraints you will use all the time, some of them you will never use. Let's, we're going to demonstrate how all of them are used so that you can get practice with the ones that in case that situation arises that you may need one of them. So let's now start in here and by the way the constraint tools are right up here in this constraint tab. Dimension is considered a constraint tool because as you would imagine it basically constrains things to each other and you can't move them whatsoever once they're fully dimensioned. So these 12 constraints here are the ones we're going to focus on. So let's get started right away. First is the coincident constraint here. And what it does is it constrains points to other sets of geometry. So let's say I wanted the center point of the circle to be on this spline here. Well, I can click the center point of the circle and then the spline. And then when I'm done with this tool, I just right click, press OK. Now I'm back in the normal view. So if I drag this point here, it's going to stay along the spline no matter what. And this can be a very useful tool in certain situations. In case, like, say, you don't know where the exact location of something is, but you know it has to be on this line. Or, in this case, I used a spline. So that's the coincident tool there. Let's go now to the collinear constraint. And as you can imagine, it makes two lines collinear. They are now of on the same line. So now if we go back to our Modify tools, if I use the Extend tool, well, actually we can't use the Extend tool there because it's two separate, they are defined as two separate lines, but I can connect them and show you that they are of now the same line. You can't even tell these are three separate lines. All right, let's go now to Concentric, this one here. So what the concentric um, tool does is it makes two circles or arcs share the same, or a combination of both, share the same center point. So if I wanted this here to be the center point of this circle and this circle, I could click this circle and there, and now you will see when I move it around that they are now sharing the same center point. And I can do the same with arcs as well. Now you'll see the arc is constrained in there, but the arcs kind of like a weird case because of how the arc, because of how I drew this arc, I didn't use the center point arc, I used this three point arc. So it was kind of, that's kind of weird physics there. Next is the um, fix constraint. Fixed constraint can be very useful. So as but let's demonstrate it now. But as you can see, I can move this arc wherever I want it right now. But once I use the fix constraint, it looks just like a lock. So as you can imagine, it locks it in place. And now you can no longer move that. So that is the fix constraint as well. So let's get into some of the, these are like I, I like to consider these the more useful constraints. Pretty much a lot of them are useful, but I like these four the most here because, yeah, you'll see why. So first is the parallel constraint. Looks like these two parallel lines. As you can imagine, it'll make two lines parallel. Same goes for the one next to it, the perpendicular constraint. You can make two sets of lines perpendicular. And the lines don't have to be attached in the perpendicular. Because I just attached them so you could see before that they weren't perpendicular and now they are. So those tools can be very useful as well. Now the tools next to them as well can, are also quite useful. So this is the horizontal constraint and it makes a line horizontal. So if I, you'll see when I'm hovering over the line just with my mouse pointer, you'll see this construction line pop up. And wherever I click on this line where the construction line is, is where the line will become horizontal at. So you'll see now it is horizontal. Same goes for the one next to it with the vertical constraint. 
now, no matter what, these lines will be vertical. Or this line will be vertical, this one will be horizontal. Alright, so those are some pretty cool constraints there. Tangent is another constraint that's pretty cool as well. So as you can imagine, it makes a line tangent to a circle or, or arc. Because say you're doing like a rounded corner, that's like the opposite of fillet, if you kind of know what I mean, and you have to use an arc, then this constraint tool, this um, tangent constraint is going to be very useful. So let's click on the line, and now the circle. So now these are, that line is now tangent to the circle at, where did my line go? Oh, so this line is contangent, tangent to this circle now, and as and tangent means it only hits the circle in one place and one place only. So smooth is probably one of the ones you're never going to need because it is a very specific tool, typically used with splines. We probably won't be using splines. I don't think I've ever used a spline in designing a robot on Autodesk Inventor. But here's how the smooth tool works. It creates like a more smooth finish between a line and a spline. It's very, like I said, very specific. So if I click on this line and then the spline, you'll see that is like very smooth now. And let's do the same over here. That like transitions very well in there. So again, smooth tool, you may not use it a lot, but it is there case we have a situation like that. So now let's go to the symmetric constraint. So now the symmetric constraint makes the angle, or not the angle, the dis, I'll say the distance between the two equal. In this case, it'll make the angle equal. So first you gotta select your center one, and then the two outer ones there. And now they are symmetric in the angle there. I could also do it with straight lines and then use the symmetric as like a center line, but and, but then it wouldn't like really know how to, you'll get an error. So this is the best example I had for this. I've never really used it a lot. And this last tool here is a very cool tool. It's the equals tool. So if I want one line to equal the length of another line, or this, not this actually I'll talk about that in a second, but if I wanted this line to be the length of this line, I'd just click on this line and then that line. Now they're, they are the same length. It doesn't necessarily have to be lines either. If I wanted, let's say, two circles, I want this circle to be the size of that one. Now it is. And they will both increase or decrease accordingly since they are not dimensioned yet. So that, those are the constraint tools. They are pretty cool tools, some, most of them. And I think you'll find great use with a lot of them. So that's going to be it for this video. From all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.